Hi, I'm Evil Damon, and uh, today's talk is on door sims. I hate traveling for conferences, and you will find out why in this talk. First off, who am I? Some of you know me, uh, quite a few of you know me. Uh, this is me. I'm known for making a lot of stickers. Uh, I also talk a bit about physical security and stuff in Australia, RFID, trying to, you know, just trying to be cool and all that. Want to be a cool hacker. And this was what it looked like when I tried to travel to a conference earlier in the year. All of this had to fit in a suitcase. So that's two physical access control systems, uh, mini doors, mi more mini doors, more RFID readers, everything else, and I still had two suitcases and a big box to ship. And I said, this sucks. Simple problem. This is all expensive as fuck. It cost me like 900 bucks to buy an access control system. I don't want to do that. So let's make a new version of it that is less expensive, easy to make, and you know, fuck it, we're just gonna make this for training and CTFs as well, just because we can. Now, quick acknowledgement of previous work. Two people have done really cool stuff with this in the past, and they're big inspirations for this. First off, we got RTA in the RFID door simulator. They mainly use it for like training at their courses. Eh, they never released open source. It's really cool, I love it, but that screen is so tiny and I can't read it for the life of me. The other one, uh, Tusk by Team Walrus, mainly fish. Uh, really cool thing with uh, maxi procs to try and get longer read ranges. They inspired me because they had this really cool user interface for a web and, and beautiful, beautiful start. So, with those in, out of the way, here's our key requirements. I wanted this to be open for everyone. You can have it, you can make it. It's gonna be cheap, open source, and hackable. Has to be portable and self-contained. None of this extra box that you need to run it. It has to have a physical display and a web GUI. And it uh, has to have a common RFID interface, Weekend RS-485, and a modern power source. Because I've had enough of random barrel jacks, random connectors that I don't like. Simple run through, we're gonna speed through it. ESP32 as a base, really cheap, really inexpensive. Uh, comes from the magical land of China and very easy to program, and it's like five bucks. And I'm gonna be a little bit fun here. Buying the dev board is like $9 cheaper than getting it pick and placed at a PCB assembly. So me telling you to solder it in is saving you like nine bucks. So if your time is worth more than $9 for 10 minutes of soldering, uh, your billable rates are better than mine. Now, uh, displays. OLED sucks because it is small and hard to read. No one's made really cheap and inexpensive large OLEDs. Same with LEDs, but character displays. Character displays have been around for fucking ever. So this is a 2004A, 20 characters, four lines, beautiful, readable. They're used in industrial systems for a reason. And they're cheap as hell. Power. We've got a little bit of stuff we have to contend with. We've got a 5 volt rail, 12 volt rail. We could make it a 3.3. RFID readers do go up to 24. We need a solution, but let's just get the highest voltage out of the way. And we went with USB PD trigger boards. These coming out of China are like a dollar each. You can plug them in, you can choose the voltage from 5, 12, 18, 24. Easy as anything. Super easy to bolt in. And uh, if you've got a random power supply where you're like, I don't have the barrel jack for this or something, a USB PD solves that problem for you, makes your life easy. As long as you're not drawing like three amps, you'll be fine. And this is where we get to the fun part. This is called the speed run any percent to get on a no fly list. This is what my first prototype looked like. It was just a bunch of perf boards, whacking everything together and just going, yeah, it's good enough. You know, I've got a screen, I've got everything looking in there. But here's the thing, it looked okay. And I got the reader to work and, you know, read data off of it. It's enough to say we got the basics, right? And, you know, when I say it worked, I mean, you could whack a card on there, you would get the data off of it. And uh, yeah, as I said, any percent to the no-fly list if you try and take this on a plane, do not do that. But yeah, it works. And then, you know, do a little bit of 3D printing. We get a nice little thing. 
and it makes it less likely that you're going to get on a no-fly list because you know it has a script, you know, it has a nice little fitting thing on there. We'll be fine. This is where we get to the part that I suck at: PCB. Now, JWA PCB and Easy ADA, great into uh, integration. You can whack them together, send it off to the magical uh, land of China, get it shipped on the longboat back for 45 days, and bam, you now have a PCB in your hand. Plugged in, worked, used an LDO. This will come back later as a fun little surprise for me. And uh, it worked. Fit in a little electronic case. So you know, it looks better. And this is where I remembered, an LDO does something fun. It takes a high voltage, makes it into a low voltage by converting the energy to thermal energy. Also known as, if you touch it, it is hot. And you will burn yourself very quickly unless you have a good ground plane. I did not have a good ground plane. So we get to the second PCB revision. Slightly less bad. I started using squeeze terminals because I thought, eh, it looks better. Add a couple more components. And it kind of worked. It looked a little bit better. And now this is the part where I fucked up and called it alpha instead of version 3 because I fucked my own naming schema. But switching it around, added screw terminals, added a multiplexer so I can actually control the lights and the speakers. You know, you want to be cool. You want to have the lights. You want to have the fancy hacking. And, you know, it was good enough. It was fine. But, you know, so many fucking issues as well. This thing caused me a fucking nightmare of debugging and issues, and, oh, you don't want to get into it. But it had a lot of small quirks, and I was like, you know, this sounds like a problem for that guy I don't like, future me. So he can deal with it later. So I went to the fun part of 3D printing. So instead of having to go down to a hobby shop, purchase like a box and everything, do all that, I decided 3D print it, make it easy, assemblable, and make it so that you can send this to some manufacturer, get it printed for yourself, and it's done. And, you know, modeling it yourself, you can do a few interesting things. Made it all pre uh, FDM printable, so you don't have to use some SLA printer because breathing in resin isn't fun. And threaded inserts make it a little bit better than trying to screw into plastic, which is not fun. And, uh, pre-slicing the holes because I didn't want to have to drill holes into plastic. And, you know, we got a couple of different revisions. So you can whack this on any type of reader that you've got because it'll fit all these different generations. As a fun note, I've named them all different things. Good luck figuring out which one is which. All I'll say is one of them is called Longboy for a reason. Now, as a little fun aside, I'm just going to add this Entirely forgot about it. There is a mild sh slant on here to make the reading angle on the screen slightly better. It is annoying as hell for printing, and it caused me so many issues because I had to add an individual raft to the bottom and it added like an hour and a half of print time to every single print. But it looks slightly better, so all of you can suffer with me to have that mild aesthetic. Anyway, now we get to the fun part where I started actually doing PCB properly. And you know, we got a four layer PCB. That makes all of my vias and everything else way easier to map through. I don't have to worry about horrible trace routing. Four layers is simple. Add some nice silk screens. I had enough of the spring terminals because I kept having to squeeze a screwdriver in there to get something out and then it would stab me in the hand. And uh, after about 20 of those, I went, screw it, we're just using screw terminals because if I'm dumb enough to do this, someone else who picks one up is going to do the exact same thing way more times. And one fun part about this revision, this is a cursed revision. Many people do not have this revision for a reason. I'm pretty sure I'm the only person I actually gave this revision specifically to was you, Iceman. Get scammed. Uh, there is an LDO that uh, I used on it, which worked fine. But I put a diode in there that was uh, not calculated for in the voltage drop. So uh, instead of a 5 volt rail, you got a 4.3. Enjoy that. Your screen will be slightly dimmer. Outside of that, uh, we have the 3.1 and 3.2. The only difference between these two is I added a screw terminal instead of having to hand solder the, uh, the power in and just some very tiny things that no one will ever notice. And this is the now public revision. You can go download this. 
It works great. And if you want to come poke at one, I'll be down there later on. Come have a play. Now, we're going to get to fun parts of firmware. Firmware sucks. Uh, chat GPT, thank you. Same with Copilot. You have saved me so many hours. And because I'm lazy, I quite literally raw literal to HTML page into this because I did not want to have to figure out how to dynamically do that. Uh, this is heavily based on Team, War uh, Team Warriors' work on Tusk just because their implementation of Weekend was better than a lot of others and their card decoding. And, you know, we had a couple of cool features in there. You have the ability to just read the card data instead of on a screen on a nice little user interface. You can go into a web access point, click on it, copy data, all of that. Now, as I said, a big part of this is I made this not just for people who want to do training, but people who want to do CTFs and everything. So there is a built-in CTF mode where you can add authorized cards, unauthorized cards, and you can lock people out. And you can just have this board open and just click that card data, hide it all away so that people can see, oh, I can see on the event logs I'm not accessing it, but it's reading this card data. Or maybe you don't want to. Maybe you want your CTF participants to suffer. Either or, up to you. I'm not to judge. And you know, you get some standard uh, settings. You can modify CTF mode and demo mode on the fly from the web UI. You can uh, make it so the Wi-Fi access point is hidden if you don't want people to try and join your Wi-Fi access point and steal all of the uh, card data running on it. And yeah, you can make the display go away. But here's the question. Did I actually, after all of this, stick to my goal of making this cheap, accessible, and open source? The answer is yes. The entire cost of this version of the door sim, which has no reader and a thing, it's got everything else you need though, is $30 USD. I'm not selling it. Enjoy trying to get that made by JLB PCB and ordering all the components yourself off AliExpress. But it's so easy to make. It's a fun little project if you want to just do soldering as well. Now, as a little extra aside, there is future projects parts to finish here. Now, there's a sneaky little trick I left GPIO ports on there. You can add a relay board directly to this. I just haven't added it in the software yet. Uh, future hardware revisions will probably have RS-485 and OSDP for communication protocols. So you can do different forms of readers. You can maybe add a whole string of readers if you want. Uh, PAX level rate limiting is in my dev branch of it that I haven't pushed yet, but it works. And the UI needs to be changed from looking like the 1990s. Uh, at some point, I will get around to that. Now, I'm speed running through this talk at this stage. So I'm just going to do the thanks real quick. Uh, Fish, fuck yeah. Uh, Drunk Rhino for printing all of this stuff. Iceman, because you had to deal with my beta testing and uh, random stuff. And Topi for giving me design ideas. I'm going to take any questions people want. Feel free to like ask. Otherwise, I'm going to be floating around with all of the door sims just for people to come play around with. As a note, it's open source, 100% like unlicensed. You can do whatever the hell you want with it. If you want to slap your logo on it and say it's mine now, you can do that. It's unlicensed. Cool, cool.